Fortunately for life on Earth, our own planet's magnetic field protects us, preventing the charged particles from hitting the surface. There is a recognizable boundary layer where the solar wind and the Earth's magnetic field meet. When the energetic particles of the solar wind impact the Earth's magnetic shield, they are suddenly slowed down causing a shock on the Sun-facing side. Beneath this boundary is the magnetosphere, which is molded as the flow of the particles is diverted around the Earth. The magnetosphere's long tail stretches millions of kilometers away from the Sun. There are two weak points in the Earth's magnetic defense to the solar wind. These occur near to the Earth's north and south magnetic poles. When solar wind particles leak into the magnetosphere, they spiral towards Earth along the magnetic field lines. On reaching the upper atmosphere, these particles interact with the gases present, causing them to emit photons and glow. This phenomenon is known as the aurora. Many years of observing the Sun have revealed that solar activity appears to vary in a regular manner from a maximum to a minimum over an 11 year cycle. This solar cycle coincides with changes to the polarity of the Sun's magnetic field, which reverses around the time of a solar maximum. The importance of understanding the Sun-Earth connection has led to a fleet of solar sentinels monitoring our star. These missions provide a wealth of data which have transformed the way scientists view the Sun and its effect on the surrounding space. This information is crucial for a better understanding of the long-term behaviour of the Sun and its impact on the Earth and its environment. Let's have a look at three of these missions, each of which provides a unique perspective of the Sun. The ESA NASA Solar and Heliospheric Observatory, or SOHO, stares at the Sun from a distance of 1.5 million kilometers away from the Earth at the first Lagrange point. Here, the combined gravity of the Earth and the Sun keeps the spacecraft in an orbit locked to the Earth-Sun line. From this position, SOHO has an uninterrupted view of the Sun and can therefore make observations 24 hours a day. SOHO was designed to study the internal structure of the Sun, its extended outer atmosphere, the corona, and the origin of the solar wind. Launched in 1995, SOHO has watched the Sun over a complete solar cycle, supplying scientists with valuable data to help understand the highs and lows of the Sun's long-term behavior. To probe the solar interior, scientists monitor the Sun's surface as it heaves rhythmically with a period of about five minutes. These motions are due to sound waves reverberating through the solar interior, sensing the layers and movement of underlying hot gas. Analyzing these sound waves using a technique known as helioseismology, scientists have revealed the first images of the sun's convection zone and the structure of sunspots below the surface. Using this technique, which is similar to the method used to study earthquakes, scientists were also able to detect developing sunspots on the far side of the sun. Sunspots are regions of strong magnetic fields that speed up the sound waves. These sound waves rebound internally from the solar surface and hence are detected on the near side of the Sun. To image the solar corona, one instrument on board SOHO uses a coronagraph to make an artificial eclipse to mask the dazzlingly bright disk of the Sun. Why the gas in the Sun's corona is so hot is one of the mysteries that SOHO is helping to solve. Using data from SOHO, scientists have analyzed the appearances and disappearances of tens of thousands of small magnetic concentrations on the solar surface. This magnetic carpet is highly dynamic and rapidly changing. Energy flows 
from the magnetic loops when they interact, producing electrical and magnetic short circuits. The laws of electromagnetism do not allow two magnetic field lines to intersect. But when field lines collide, they snap and subsequently reconnect. This mechanism is known as magnetic reconnection. The very strong electric currents induced during the reconnection process heat the corona to a temperature of several million degrees. The solar wind consists of two components. The fast solar wind, which is close in composition to the sun's photosphere, and the slow solar wind, that is more like the solar corona's composition. So as measured for the first time, the acceleration profile of both components of the solar wind and has found that the acceleration takes place surprisingly close to the solar surface. It also observed the fast solar wind flowing from funnel-shaped magnetic fields that pass through coronal holes, areas of the solar corona that are cooler and lower in density. Ulysses was launched in 1990 on a five-year mission to become the first spacecraft to study the unknown environment of space above and below the poles of the Sun. In order to get into its unique orbit around the solar poles, Ulysses had to perform a slingshot maneuver around Jupiter. When the mission ended in 2009, it had orbited the solar poles three times, providing a view of the Sun never seen before. This incredible mission did not just study the Sun, it also studied the interaction of the material emitted by the Sun with inflowing interstellar material. The Ulysses mission achieved numerous firsts and discoveries. Let's have a look at a few of them. The extended length of the Ulysses mission allowed the Sun to be monitored during periods of minimum and maximum solar activity. It was data from this mission that showed that the polarity reversal of the Sun's magnetic field carried into the heliosphere by the solar wind was a surprisingly simple process. It simply appears to rotate through 180 degrees from sunspot minimum through sunspot maximum and back to sunspot minimum again. Ulysses explored the solar wind from all angles producing the first three-dimensional view of it in the heliosphere and monitored how it changed with time. Prior to Ulysses, solar wind measurements were only available from satellites located close to the Sun's equatorial plane. These measurements were assumed to represent the dominant state of the wind. Ulysses showed that a faster solar wind flow, originating at high latitudes, dominates the heliosphere for most of the solar activity cycle. Astronomical observations suggest that the Sun is currently moving through a warm cloud of interstellar dust and gas. Ulysses was able to make the first direct measurements of the dust and helium from this local cloud that has penetrated deep into the heliosphere. Before Ulysses was launched, it was thought that charged energetic particles created during solar storms would be confined to latitudes close to the location of the storms. Charged particles are constrained to move along magnetic field lines, and the heliospheric magnetic field was not expected to have large excursions in latitude. However, Ulysses observed large numbers of energetic particles over the solar poles, far away from the location of the solar storms that created them. This discovery has forced scientists to revisit their ideas about the magnetic field and how particles are transported in the heliosphere. 